All right, so uh, welcome to online presentations from PowerPoint to YouTube to Moodle, which is being hosted by both the Online Learning Office and the Office of Information Technology at Mount St. Mary College. Uh, this is the latest install installation of your digital toolkit, which is a summer series that we are running for instructors to give you a, some idea of the online tools that are available for face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and fully online courses. Uh, we just had a presentation last week on the GC the G Suite integration, which is the Google accounts at Mount St. Mary College, and uh, their integration with eClass. And actually, that uh, video is now available on YouTube. So after this presentation is over, you can go to our YouTube channel, MSMC Online Learning, and check that out for yourself. And next week, we'll be having another presentation on Atomic Learning, which is a series of pre-designed educational materials which you can use and integrate into your eClass course. So before we get started, just want to start off with a little disclaimer. Um, this webinar is currently being recorded, and we'll be sending you a link to this recording with some additional resources after the webinar has ended. Um, you don't need to speak through this through your microphone on your computer or use your webcam during this webinar. All uh, interaction can be through the chat feature. Um, we will be saving time for questions uh, at the end of the presentation, so when we're done, uh, please feel free to use the chat box and uh, we will use that time to you know, uh, answer any questions that you might still have. Uh, so just to introduce us, uh, my name is William Biersack again. Um, I'm in the Instructional Support Assistant at the Office of Online Learning. So basically what I do, in addition to some troubleshooting in E-Class and uh, courses that are being hosted within E-Class, I also train faculty, staff, and students in the use of E-Class and its features. Um, and Jana, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Um, yeah, hi, I'm Jana, and I work in the um, IT office. Uh, yeah, I was getting a little feedback there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, and uh, I do a lot of the work with the hardware and software uh, that's on campus, and I give training. I do training videos, and I do classes for faculty and staff. Um, and some students uh, on all the different technology that's on campus. Awesome. So, uh, Jonna, do you uh, want to go ahead and uh, take the wheel now? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, welcome. Let me see if I can get. Okay, so as you know, we're here to show you an easy way to convert a PowerPoint presentation into a video. Uh, once that's created, you can then easily put it into eClass. I'm going to show you how to prepare your PowerPoint, how to set up your headphone and your microphone. Um, I'll do a demo to show you how easy it is to capture the audio that goes with your PowerPoint. Then we'll save the PowerPoint and create a video. Um, Billy will then show you how to upload it to YouTube, which is on G Suite. He'll uh, then integrate it into eClass, and he's going to give you some practical examples. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing you have to know is we have to prepare uh, before you even go in to do your video. So you need a PowerPoint. You can use an existing PowerPoint, or you can create a brand new PowerPoint presentation. You have to have a script ready. Uh, it could be as easy as having an outline, or you can do it word for word, or you can just wing it, whichever works best for you. And lastly, we want to make sure that you have your headphones and your microphone ready. We recommend that you use an external mic and speakers. So headphones or earbuds with a built-in mic works the best. The internal uh, mic and speakers that are built into your computer usually produces feedback and a lower quality sound. So you're better off just plugging your headphone or your earbuds in, um, into your laptop or your computer for a better experience. So this is how you would check to see if your computer recognizes your headphones when you plug them in. This is usually a stumbling block for a lot of people when they create a video, so I just want to take the mystery out of it. Uh, what you need to do is go to the control panel. If you're using Windows 10, 
you would go to the Start button, you would open up the Windows System uh, uh, folder, and then that's where you'll find the Control Panel. If you're using Windows 7, you go to the Start button in the bottom left corner, and the Control Panel just pops up on the right side. In both of those cases, you will get the Sound option, and that's where we'll actually look to see if your um, headphones are, pro are properly, if your headphones are the default. Um, I'm going to actually uh, demo that for you on my computer. I think it'll be easier to see if I just do it. Okay, so you should see my screen right now, and I do have Windows 10. So uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom left corner. I'm going to scroll all the way down to my Windows System folder, and then I'm going to go to Control Panel. So in the middle here is my sound option, and that's just what I want to show you. It's buried a little bit, and some people uh, don't know how to find this. So this shows you that my headset that I have plugged in right now is actually the default. That's what this green check mark means. So that's good. It is uh, recognizing my headphones. And then for recording, it does say my microphone on my uh, headset is the default. If neither one of these were the default, if they actually were using the internal um, microphone here, you would just be able to set the uh, headset as the default by using this option down here. This option would actually light up and you can set it as a default. Okay, so I just wanted to go over that. I know it's a little little detailed, but I know it's one of those stumbling blocks uh, that people usually run into when their uh, microphone um, or their sound doesn't work. Okay, so now that we know that works, I want to go to my uh, PowerPoint. This is my demo PowerPoint, and I want to show you how to create the video. So I have my PowerPoint. Let's say I have a script, although I am going to wing it, and uh, my headphones uh, are plugged in. So the first thing I want to do is save my PowerPoint as a new name. So then I'll have one PowerPoint, one version, with the audio and one without. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to do that. So I'm just going to change this one and say it's with video, with audio. I'm going to save it. Okay, so that's the one that I have opened now, my PowerPoint with the audio. Okay, so I'm actually ready to record my video now. Um, in order to record it, along the top, you would go to the Slideshow tab. There is a Record Slideshow option right here. I'm going to hit the drop down and I'm going to say start recording from the beginning. Okay, so we're almost ready to record. I just have a few things to say first. Um, when you switch from slide to slide, you have to make sure you stop talking. Um, when During the transition, the audio is not recorded. So only talk when a slide is, is, uh, is up. And uh, the second thing is, is you may want to practice a slide or two and then go back and check the audio to see uh, how it sounds. If you do have a problem with the audio or it doesn't seem loud enough, um, down here on the bottom of your screen, you can just, um, you could just use this option for sound to make it a little louder. Okay, so I would recommend instead of going through the whole presentation, uh, just to do a quick demo on a couple of slides. Okay, so continuing with my demo here, um, I actually, it's actually asking me now, do I want to capture the slides, the, the animations that I may have on any slides. Um, I'll also be capturing my narration, anything I say, and if I use the laser pointer or if I use the ink option. So I'm going to re, I'm going to save all that. That's all going to be part of my recording. All right, so let me start my recording. Okay, so here's the demo. My recording is started. As you can see on the top corner, you can see how many seconds I've used so far. There's an option right here to pause. So you could pause your recording if you have to wait a minute to decide what you're going to talk about. Um, 
And uh, this option up here can move you through your slides, or you can use the options on the bottom of your PowerPoint to move you through your slides. Um, okay, so my PowerPoint has started. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to move a PowerPoint into a video, a video to YouTube, which is part of Google Suite, and then your YouTube is going to go into eClass. All right, and thank you. So that was how easy it was to go through my slides and to record the audio. At this point, you can listen to it by going to this option. I'm still on the slideshow um, tab. From the beginning, we'll actually play it for you with all your audio. Um, the other thing I want to show you is every slide right now has a little icon in the bottom corner. It's got a little speaker icon in the bottom corner. Um, so if there's a slide that you don't like what you said on it, you can easily just delete the um, you could just delete the um, the icon. So I have one down here, and I'm just going to delete it. And then I can uh, record my slideshow just on that current slide. So you don't have to do the presentation over again if you find a problem. You can just um, go to the particular slides that you didn't like and just re-record those slides. That's a nice time saver that I wanted to make sure you knew about. If you did decide you didn't like the whole presentation, you can just clear the slides. So again, under Record Slideshow, there's a clear option there. And you would clear all the timings from all the slides. And then you would go back and clear all the narration on all the slides. And then you can just start over from the beginning and do the whole recording. I'm not going to do that because I think my recording came out pretty good. OK, so um, once you're happy with your recording, it's um, very easy to do a uh, save. So let's save it. Um, just use this old floppy disk icon in the top left corner to save it. Or you can do File, um, Save, or Save As. Um, and now we want to create a video. So I'm going to go back to File, and this time I'm going to go down to Export. Okay, so under the Export option, I want to create a video. And with these options, it's asking you what kind of quality do you want to create. So I don't need presentation quality. Um, we're only going to use it on the Internet. So I'm going to choose uh, this quality. The presentation one is, is probably if you were going to burn a CD or something like that. So I'll use the internet quality. Um, I'm going to use all of my timings and all my narrations. I want that to be part of it, so I'll keep that as the option. And then I'll go right here and create my video. Okay, I'm going to put my video in this folder. And it's going to create an MP4 for me, and I'm just going to do save. Okay, so the video was actually created. Let me go back and show you that. I'll open up my folder. Here's where I saved everything. Here is my um, MP4 file right up here on the top. Okay, so I created it. It was pretty simple, wasn't it? Um, it's on my computer right now, and I do want to share it with other people, and I want to get it over to eClass. So that portion of it, I'm going to turn over to Billy and um, have him show you what you would do next. If you do have any questions at the end, I'll be able to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Awesome. So I'll just uh, go ahead and go back to sharing our PowerPoint from before. And it's loading. All right. So now we've... At this point in the game, we've already saved our PowerPoint as a MP4 video file. So now I'm going to go through the steps from taking that file and putting it on YouTube. And so, why YouTube? And that, uh, when I say why YouTube, I mean why put it on the internet at all? Like, why not just put the MP4 on eClass? So there are distinct benefits for uploading your videos to the internet and then putting it on eClass. And one of those is accessibility. 
And uh, when I say accessibility, I'm thinking like the Americans with Disabilities Act and making sure that everything is available for all learners of all types. So in terms of accessibility, YouTube has automatic closed captioning. So that, um, say maybe um, if you're taking a lecture PowerPoint and turning it into a lecture video, that way YouTube will catch all, if there's any um, dialogue that you add to your presentation, any uh, nuances that you uh, articulate orally, and that way YouTube will automatically close caption your speech so that it catches that text as well, so that people that need to read uh, your text will be able to see everything you say as well as everything on the PowerPoint. Another benefit is mobile friendliness. Um, while MP4 is a nice condensed um, video file format, uh, if you put it on YouTube, it will be uploaded and then it will be optimized for many different devices, many different connections. So um, it doesn't matter if you're on a mobile phone, if you're on a laptop or a tablet, uh, there, whatever the ri wide range of devices your students are on, they'll have access to your video. Uh, another benefit is that it allows your videos to be shared privately. So if you are an instructor and you'd rather not have your content be public, so don't want your file to be uh, widespread shared as a file and you don't want it to be just publicly posted on the internet, you can opt to have it shared privately so that only people who directly have the link are able to access it. Otherwise, no one can search it on YouTube and see it. Um, also, uh, the videos that are posted on uh, YouTube can easily be linked into your e-course or embedded into the course pages, which we will go into later on in this presentation. Uh, some other benefits of utilizing YouTube, and now when I say utilizing YouTube, I mean YouTube compared to other video streaming services like Vimeo or whatever. Um, well, with YouTube, um, it's a single sign-on process. So if you go onto the My MSMC portal, it will streamline the, the, the entire process because you'll automatically be signed in to your G Suite account, which is linked to YouTube. It will give you a sign into YouTube, and you'll automatically be signed into eClass as well. So you don't need to create a new account. Um, and also, as a possible benefit, you don't need to share your personal uh, private uh, accounts with your students by having like, you know, your private Vimeo um, account to host all your lecture videos and such. But no, you will be able to use a account that is MSMC branded and linked to your MSMC account. And without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen this time to demonstrate uh, the steps for signing into YouTube through your G Suite account and uploading your MP4 video to YouTube. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, and There we go. All right. So now you should be able to see my screen. I am on the My MSMC portal at this time. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so assuming I just signed into My MSMC at a portal.msmc.edu, I will go ahead. I'm going to click on the Google icon right now. And so that's going to assign me into my uh, Mount branded uh, Google account. and. While I'm in Google, I'm just going to go ahead. Now that I'm signed into Google, I'm just going to go ahead and go to YouTube.com. You should see that you're signed into your account already, but if not, all you have to do is go to Sign In. If it doesn't automatically pick up your sign in, and I just click on Sign In and it automatically picked up the Google sign in I already had. So I'm going to scroll over the icon, and you should see yes, yeah, so and now it's logged in through my. MSMC branded Google account. So now what I'm going to do, now that I'm signed in to YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this upwards arrow icon. You can see that I'm on the home page. I'm on youtube.com. I'm going to click on upload. All right, so now I'm on the upload site. So I'll be able to take my file and put it on YouTube. So I'm just going to 
put it on the side of my screen so you can see I, on my desktop I have a little sample video so did the same process I took a PowerPoint and turned it into an mp4 video and now I'm going to upload it on this page so first I'm going to select my privacy setting so for example if I wanted if I if I didn't care I just wanted it online I didn't care if it was public or whatnot I could make it public but for those instructors that are concerned about um, it being shared publicly or if it, uh, concerned about it being able to be searched online you could make it unlisted so what this does is that if you have the link you can send that link to your students you can link it on eClass and so on and so forth but no one can go on youtube.com type in the search box and accidentally stumble on your video it is no one can search for it it's unlisted so just for uh, sake of doing that I'm just gonna click on unlisted and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag and drop my video so I could also click on this icon and browse for it in the computer but just for today I'm going to click on the video and I'm going to drag it and drop it right here and now you see the uploading process has already begun so while that's going on I'm just gonna go ahead and add some pertinent information to this video so uh, it's a it's automatically going to pick up the title that you set for the file. So the file was named sample video. So the title for the video says sample video right now. I could go in and change it, but I think that's quite all right. Uh, you can add a description. So I'm just going to put sample because that's the only function this will be serving. Um, it will take a selection of thumbnails from the uh, length of the video. You can choose which one suits your purposes. Now I'm in advanced settings, uh, and I'll just go through and set the, uh, the, uh, set the settings I want. Um, students don't need to comment on the video. I'm just going to scroll through. The video language is in English. And category, um, so if you're using it for the purposes of an online course, you can set it to education as the category. And while I'm doing all this, you can see at the top it's uh, processing the video and bringing it onto YouTube. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit done. Um, if the processing is 100% completed, it will say publish instead. But if you just hit this blue button, the process is completed. And when the video is completed, it will give you some more options. But for now, it's still spinning its wheels and uh, trying to figure everything out. So that is the process of taking your video and bringing it to YouTube with your Mount Google uh, username. So I'm going to stop sharing and go back to uh, go back to our PowerPoint quickly. Okay, so now that we've had our video on YouTube, we're now going to bring it over to Moodle, in other words, eClass. So there are two methods that I'm going to point out to you for taking your YouTube video and making it available via eClass. So the first method is to create a link. So same as um, going on to eClass and uh, linking to an external website, creating a link on your eClass page. Another method is to take your video and embed it into the front page of your course or within the text of one of your eClass activities. So I'm going to demonstrate the process for that. And I see that Peter and Kristen are typing. Is uh, everything all right? All right. Just, it, yeah, Adobe Connect said that you were typing, so I just wanted to make sure that nothing was being lost. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, talk about integration with eClass. I'm going to share my screen again, but now that we have our content on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and show how to take it from YouTube and integrate it with eClass. All right, so I'm back on my screen, and we can see now that the upload has completed for the video I just brought on to eClass. So, I'm going to go ahead and switch my browser to this sample course that I created for the purpose of today's webinar. So um, 
I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start by creating a link on my eClass page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an activity or resource. I'm going to go on this drop-down menu. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to the resources section. And at the very bottom, it says URL, meaning a website. So I'm going to click on that option. And then I'm going to select Add. And it's going to bring you to a new page for adding a new URL to your sample course. Um, this is still our sample video, so I'm just going to give it the same naming convention, sample video. Uh, sorry. Uh, sample video. Um, under description, what I think might be best would be to add um, how long the video is. Uh, so perhaps video length. Um, let's say, for the sake of today, let's say it's five minutes. Um, and maybe if you wanted to add a topic so that the students know precisely what they'll be watching. Um, so between the specific name that you give it on eClass and this, the topic in the description, they should know what they're about to open. Um, and you can also choose whether or not you want to display the, the description on the course page. Um, so now I'm going to go to external URL, which is the field where we'll put the, um, the actual web address for your YouTube video. So right here we have this address. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and go to the main YouTube page for the video. I don't want to play it, but I'm going to take this web address and I'm going to go back to eClass and insert the external URL link. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead to appearance. And what I want to do is I want to change the display from automatic to embed. So what that means is that when they open the link for the YouTube video, it will be embedded within the eClass page rather than um, the alternative would be like it would redirect them to YouTube or bring up a pop-up. But this way they have to stay within eClass and they're not being bounced around and ping-ponged between multiple um, websites. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to return to the save and, the re and return to course. And now we see that we have a new link under my sample course section, sample video, just like I named it. And I'm going to click on it just to show you. And I assume you can see, but uh, now the video is embedded within this eClass page and the description is underneath. So that is one particular method for adding your YouTube video and making it available on eClass. And I would recommend this uh, method, um, particularly like a, for um, if like you have a lecture that it, so it's the main content for uh, your lesson, um, and you want to make it available on eClass, you can take the YouTube video and then make it a link. But right now, I'm going to go back into the course, and I'm going to demonstrate another method, which is going into a pre-existing uh, pre activity and embedding the uh, YouTube video within the activity. So I already created a sample form. And I'm going to open up. And it says right there in the description for students, um, watch the video. And I provided the web address and um, some direct directions. I uh, said, after watching, you can post a one paragraph summary and responded to classmates. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, there's no actual discussion topics started because it's not uh, this is not a live course. But um, right now, the expectation would be for a student to uh, drag and drop the link into the web address uh, bar and go to YouTube that way. So instead, what I'm going to do is for this form, I'm going to edit the settings. And within the edit settings, I'm going to go to the description field where I gave the directions. And you can see this text box that we have. And this is a standard text box that you'll see in multiple fields on eClass, um, particularly the description field on activities. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this direction. So instead, I'm going to say, watch the video below, because my intention is to take the video and embed it. So it's going to appear right underneath this text that I'm writing. So watch the video below, and then after watching, so on and so forth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to YouTube to the page for my sample video. I'm going to go to share. And then after I click on share, I'm going to go to embed. 
And here it's going to give you a line of HTML code. And for people that are worrying right now, for me saying HTML code, don't worry, because you do not have to have a working knowledge of that in order to utilize the code um, and to make uh, your videos available on the um, description field. Um, you just need to know how to copy and paste. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I just copied the code from the embed field right here. And I'm going to go back into eClass in the edit form page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button right here, the uh, angle brackets symbol. And I, while I'm hovering, you can see that it says edit HTML source. I'm going to click on that right now. And I'm going to, it's cause, so now it's, uh, you can see all the HTML code for the text in this box. I'm going to uh, hit enter to go down to a new line. And then I'm going to paste the code from, e uh, from YouTube. So now that code has been added, and I'm going to click on Update right here in the bottom left corner. And now if I'm going to extend the box, and now you can see that we have the text, and now we have the video in line in the text box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and hit Save and Display, which will reopen the forum, only now with everything new. So now we can see that the video is in line in the description field on our activity. Um, so now, for example, uh, if I wanted students to participate in the discussion forum, the video is right there. So rather than having to be redirected to a website and coming back, they can just watch it right there. And then when they're done watching the video, they can click on Add a New Discussion Topic and start discussing as a class the video that they just watched. And so embedding is just another method for adding your YouTube video to your class. And I believe that was all I wanted to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, and I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint one last time. Oh, and now some practical examples. So um, some ways I think this, this method of creating an online presentation would benefit your traditional face-to-face, -face, um, web-enhanced, hybrid, fully online, whichever course you are teaching, how you could benefit from it. Um, so you could create a digital version of a lecture using a pre-existing PowerPoint presentation. Why would you do this? Um, many reasons. Uh, for example, I have a lot of experiences with the education division, say, um, an instructor has to go uh, participate or present at a conference. Um, like, for example, like a, we have a wonderful education instructors that um, deliver conference presentations all around. So say you get called for a, com a conference and you I know, need to replace a face-to-face -face day of class with an online day of class. What you could do is you could pre-record your lecture and then make it a video and then make that available on the class site and then create supplemental activities, forums, act, uh, assignment modules, whichever, um, to supplement the lecture that you made as a video. Uh, one tip that I would give you is um, if the lecture has a large amount of content to it, so say it's a 45 minute lecture and you're trying to turn it into a video, I would suggest trying to uh, break it up into smaller parts. So um, if there's, if you can chunk it into smaller sections and create sep vid uh, separate videos for each, that would be a little easier for uh, students to ingest on an online format. Another example that I would like to give is providing video content that directly relates to an activity in your class course, such as a forum or assignment. So this would be the embed example that I just did, where you have a forum and you want to provi provide video content, either that you created on YouTube or PowerPoint or stuff that you found externally on, a, on YouTube yourself. Uh, what you could do is you can embed the content directly into the description field for the activity so that when students open the activity and get ready to participate, the video will be right on the page and they can view that before participating in your activity online. And this would work for the form activity, for the assignment activity, uh, for whichever ones you are using, that should be compatible. One last example, 
And this is just a list of examples that I'm coming up with. Um, if you have other ways that you would like to use YouTube videos in your eClass course, we can definitely talk about that and have a one-on-one -on -one consultation about that. Um, but one other suggestion is creating a video introduction for an online course or an individual course section. So what I mean is, um, is for example, say you're uh, teaching a fully online course. You could create videos that introduce particular modules on particular topics, or you can use this as a modality for introducing the entire course and introducing yourself to your students. Uh, and one tip for that would be to create a label resource on the front page of your eClass course and embed the video directly into the text field so that it appears front and center on the front landing page of your eClass course. And actually, I'm a, I, I would, would like, if you will spare me the time, to show you an example of that, because we have a stellar example of this. Um, we have a uh, master course of Philosophy 103 that was created by Joshua Ravel that we refer instructors to from time to time. And it was, a, it, it was an exemplary example of a fully online course, and I would like to share that with you quickly, because um, this is something that he had done. So, Right now, you can see the Introduction to Philosophy course in front of you. I'm going to quickly scroll down just to show you. So, and it's easy for instructors, students, to forget that the other person on the other side of the screen is you know, an actual human being. So I really appreciated how he took the time to create a YouTube video and embedded it directly into his course so that he could introduce himself to his students. So for him, he used it to introduce the entire course and tr introduce himself as the instructor. One thing that you could do is that you could also go a step further and say you want to create an outline for each individual topic of each individual, in, uh, each, each individual module of your course. You could create a PowerPoint outlining the topics to be covered and the assignments expected of them in that particular week in that particular module and create a PowerPoint, narrate the PowerPoint, create a video, and then you can embed it into your eClass course. And just like I said before, the way to do that would be to add an activity or resource, create a label, add the label, and then just like we did before, so like here's the text box, the standard text box that we always have. Click on the angle bracket symbol for adding HTML code. I'm going to paste the code from the YouTube video that we had before. I'm going to click on Update again, and now we can see the YouTube video is in line on the text. And when I hit Save and Return to Course, the page loads, and right there, the video is front and center on the eClass course. So you can make this the like first thing that they see in a eClass section, so it's right there, and they can be introduced to the section if it's an introductory video, uh, or if it's an introduction to the entire course, you can make it part of the welcome uh, section that they first see when they first enter the course. So this is just an idea for any faculty, staff, instructors that are interested in possibly designing uh, an online course. So I'm going to quickly go back one last time, this time I mean it, <laughs> go back to our PowerPoint. And Here's just some best practices for when you're creating videos. Just some uh, things I would think would be a that would benefit your course if you considered them. So first, a uh, video and audio quality should be clear. So a best way to check that is just to check your resources. So just going back and um, checking your videos, checking your audio, just to make sure that everything is clear. Um, using Jana's tips from before to make sure that your microphone is connected well. Using an external uh, microphone when you're recording because that will produce the best quality audio. Uh, another suggestion is to keep videos brief when possible. So that comes back to the idea of um, a, a long lecture that is being turned into a video. Um, so chunking it into small sections, um, usually, like you know, if at all possible, like you know, uh, generally we suggest uh, like a five-minute video would be perfect for an instructor. But however it works, it works. Um, and if you have a, already have a 45-minute video, lecture and you want to put it on YouTube, that's also okay because YouTube, when you go back to YouTube, it saves your place in the video so students won't lose 
their place when they're watching the video and they need to navigate away from YouTube for a short time. Another best practice would be to aim for timelessness. And what I mean by that is to consider the shelf life of your video. So um, if there's any information that may become outdated, like for example, um, today in this, in this particular uh, session, uh, Jonna mentioned the current version of um, well, so Windows 10, Windows 7, uh, the current version of PowerPoint. I mentioned the current versions of YouTube and um, eClass. So if one of those pieces of technology changed, then we might have to change the video or re-record in order to um, make it compatible with the current technology. So um, in terms of instruction, you want to make sure that it's the, uh, you're providing information that will last a while and not become outdated really quickly. Uh, another best practice is to check your captions after your video is uploaded to YouTube. So YouTube does automatically produce um, closed captioning for your videos, um, and it's pretty spot on. Um, like I want to say like 90% of your vi uh, words are um, captured accurately as long as you're speaking clearly uh, and at a good pace. But another good practice would be to check the closed captioning on your videos after it's uploaded. And then um, if you feel that there are some key words and terms that are being lost in the translation, you can go into the video manager on your YouTube um, account, and then you can insert your own captions. So you can type in the words as you say them so uh, that students get the correct uh, vocabulary, they get the correct um, text for the words that you're saying. And that is pretty much it. So uh, now I want to open up a, a Q&A section for all our participants today. Um, so we can take this time to enter any questions you have in the chat box. And also, you can uh, please enter your preferred email address if you're also interested in receiving a link for the, uh, for the recording of this section. Uh, can I interrupt this for um, I was wondering if I could Also, we have our screen. information for both on the online learning office and the Office quickly. of if Information mind, Technology if you want to get I'm in touch with us sharing, after I'm the fact. Share my screen. Of course. Um, let me minimize this, sorry. Absolutely, go ahead. OK, here um, I'm in the portal, and I already clicked on the G, uh, the Google tab. And I just wanted to show you that there's these nine little squares on the corner. And this gives you all the tools for G Suite. And if you click on that, um, you know, here's where your drive is, your Google Sites. But if you go to More on the bottom, that shows you, uh, that automatically connects you to YouTube also. So I just wanted to show you that G Suite has all these tools already built in on these nine little squares. And I know Billy showed you a shortcut where you just went to the top and typed in YouTube. And I just wanted to show you an alternate way um, is to use these nine little squares in the corner. So that, that's, yeah, that's all I wanted perfect. to show you. <laughs> Thanks, Jonna. Yeah, actually, that relates well with um, the content that you provided uh, last week in the uh, last week's session of Digital Toolkit, so that's perfect, yes, actually. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, to uh, going to the web address to is, um, yes, uh, going to the web address is like my um, uh, my instinctual uh, response when I'm, I'm going to insert a new um, uh, <laughs> web address, so. Yeah, um, everybody has their shortcuts. Absolutely. Oh, and we answered Peter's question without even trying to, so that's perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so is there anyone else that has a question? Um, uh, I know, Kristen, that you had a comment. Yeah, can, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I, I just want to add a couple uh, additional considerations to Billy's list um, for both students and, and faculty. So as we all kind of, you know, dive deeper into the world of digital citizenship as faculty and students, it's important to think about our intellectual property um, and the products that we're creating um, as faculty and the products that students are creating uh, through their learning experience. So 
Creating a YouTube channel is a great way for instructors and for students to retain rights to materials that they're building. Um, and that's something I had mentioned actually in our previous um, webinar. Uh, so YouTube's a great way to do that. Um, also, the skills that you um, acquire as a faculty member using PowerPoint, putting it onto YouTube, putting it onto Moodle, are also skills you can then turn over to your students once you become well-versed so that their presentations can also go on to PowerPoint, onto YouTube, and onto Moodle um, as well. Uh, so, so they no longer have to do the old school PowerPoint presentation in front of the classroom, but in fact can embed their own videos onto eClass through a discussion forum and share with their peers and perhaps have a nice healthy dialogue and discussion with their peers through a discussion forum on their presentations. Um, and as Billy mentioned, uh, it, the video doesn't need to stop at the video. The video can be embedded or included or coupled with another activity so that you can understand how the students are understanding the video. Um, instead of providing a lecture, being unsure if they watched it or watched it thoroughly, putting it into a discussion forum or in a quiz is a great way to assess uh, the, the learning that's that's taking place. And the last note I'll make um, for both students and for faculty, mostly students, is that, uh, believe it or not, many students still have a very hard time opening up a PowerPoint from eClass. Um, there's a couple step process, and I know from for some of our adult students that haven't been in school for 20 or 30 years, clicking on a PowerPoint in, in eClass and waiting for it to upload um, it is sometimes a technological sort of blip. So when you put something onto YouTube and then put it onto eClass, there's minimal effort in terms of opening up a PowerPoint and having the skills to be able to troubleshoot that if something happens. So putting it right onto eClass is, is great. So I just wanted to add those, those few additional comments. Thank you. Perfect, Kristen. Thanks for contributing that. I'd, uh... Yeah, you're always like you have a full scope of understanding uh, with regards to like um, those big picture issues. Yeah, thank you. Um, so at this time, if there's any other participants that are um, that have a lingering question on their minds, that you're free to ask it now um, in the chat box. Um, otherwise, um, the Office of Online Learning is available to you for any eClass related support that you need, um, and our information is on the screen right now. Um, the Office of Information Technology is available to you for technological support. Jana is available for, to, for you for um, training and such. Um, sure. And I so see Peter's typing right now. I was going to say, if you do need any more help with the videos, or if you want to put the videos somewhere else other than um, in Moodle or eClass, I could certainly help you get it onto a website or your personal website or email it out. Or So there's many more options and places that you can put your videos now that you know how to get it to YouTube. Yeah, and absolutely. And if you want to try something adventurous with eClass, or if you just want to follow up a consultation with us, just so that um, we can um, sort everything out one-on-one -on -one and make sure that everything is in your eClass site correctly, you can certainly make an appointment with us and the professionals at the Online Learning Office by going to our resource website on the screen right now, onlinelearning.msmc.edu, and going to the consultations page. And that way you can make a booking with one of our online learning professionals um, to help with the design of your online course. And that should be it. So I want to thank everyone for participating today. Um, if uh, you would like a recording of uh, this webinar, once it's available on YouTube, we will be sending that out. Um, and you can just leave a preferred email address in the chat box. Uh, so otherwise, thank you for participating today. It was great having you.